Start talking. I am Will, the host. I am Mike, the favorite host. Thank you. <laughs> um, now we're back. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. We had a little layoff there. We had to take a break. Um, you know, we we get tired. Sorry, of <laughs> um, this week we have a great show. Great show. Um, we are going to be interviewing dope filmmaker, dope writer, dope storyteller, uh, Alexander King. Say what's up. What's goody? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're also going to be interviewing uh, Cole Lawson. She is a uh, actress um, and a host of other things. She uh, appears in this movie that Alexander King wrote and directed. Um, so we're going to be talking with them about that film, uh, how how their life is going in general, and how we could uh, be better better represented. Repre- represented <laughs> niggas is making up new words. <laughs> I was gonna let you, you flow with it stuff. too. <laughs> that shit was not flowing well. You should have caught me a while ago. I was, um, I was, I'm coming to help you, man. I'm just setting stuff up. Better represented <laughs> in media. So, how are y'all doing today? Blessed. I'm doing good. Good. Blessed and highly favored. Y'all look good. Y'all sound good. I know y'all feeling good after this amazing movie y'all just put out. Um, man, I can't even express this feeling. Let's go ahead. Just share, just share your general feelings right now. Just if y'all don't know, um, Alexander just put out an amazing film called Seven, short film. Oh, what is it? I messed up my spit. Um, tell us how you like how you just kind of feel right now, just after just having this release, which was lit by the way on Hopping. Thank you, know, thank you. Chat, but, um, um, I feel good. I'm just like very much. Um, it's given me you know the motivation to get right back into it but i'm also you know making sure that i'm being present and accepting you know all that's coming my way um just seeing the support from the community is like it's crazy it's just crazy and um yeah just like i'm i'm ready to, to kind of get back in it to be honest word, word. um so i know you are from north carolina and it seems like you've moved a whole host of places uh, what brought you out to LA initially? Um, I'm actually not from North Carolina. I was born in North Carolina. Born in North Carolina. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I was only there like literally for my birth and, and then that was it. It was almost like passing through. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm from the East coast, uh, all over the East coast, um, DMV area, Connecticut in particular. Um, I kind of just went to LA, um, based upon a feeling that I needed to be there, not necessarily for, um, for anything. I just woke up one day. It was like, yeah, I got to go to LA. And, um, I was working out there and just enjoying being there, but something just kept, you know, telling me to go. Um, and then that's where I kind of like fell in love with my passion. Well, you know, being out in LA. Did, did you first start directing out LA or was it just the storytelling aspect? Um, more so like my own personal writings and then wanting to get my writings out. Um, I was just like, Hey, I'm going to just put on a project, which was Quirious. Um, and it was really a, like a group effort, um, putting out Quirious. And then it just went from there. Like from there, I noticed, you know, things that I was more interested in. I love creating the stories and, you know, coming up with all these concepts, but then also directing is like, it's a whole nother world. Like they're two different worlds. Um, and my goal is to definitely be a part of both of those worlds. So, um, so I watch Quirious. I watch a couple episodes of Quirious and then also watch Seven. 
why did you decide to not appear in the short film like you had in Queries? Um, originally, I was never going to be in Queries. Um, my, I don't necessarily want to be in front of the camera. I'm more behind the scenes. And um, we had two castmates, original castmates that um, it just didn't work out. So I was able to cast for one of them. And then the other one, it was kind of like, just you got to do it. You can't afford anyone else. You can afford yourself. So go ahead and get it done. So that's kind of how I, um, that's actually how I got into acting in Aquarius. And it's opposite because I actually wrote seven for me to act. Um, just watching me act in Aquarius, I was like, okay, well, I can be better. I can do better. And if I want to be a director, I need to understand where the actresses and actors are coming from. So let me just write a film for me to, you know, kind of um, um, practice uh, being on in front of the camera and getting more comfortable with that. And so basically they're both opposite. And that's literally how, why I'm not in seven is at this point I watched, I was like, you know what? I, I feel like I have someone else that's going to be you know, way better for this, and it was cool. <laughs> sometimes you got a sprite lead that thing. Sometimes you just gotta. Hey, look, whatever, whatever my budget. <laughs> it's a non-budget, so I, I can only afford myself. So, listen, we don't get into that because I know I asked you that before. Like, how did you afford to just put do these projects? And you was like, yo, I straight up put my own bread up. You just got it done. Definitely come back to that. But I just wanted to real quickly because I don't think we really fully got into introductions because Cole's here as well. Yeah. Um, if y'all could just kind of tell us, you know. Uh, a little bit about yourselves, as well as how y'all got into storytelling. Because Cole, I've been a long time fan of you as far as the poetry community. Um, I'm a poet myself, and people like yourself have definitely inspired me to do my thing. So y'all can just kind of tell us, you know, a little bit about yourselves and how you kind of became the storytellers that you are in your respective communities. Go ahead, Cole. Um, I will start off. So my name is Cole. I am originally born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm a Navy veteran, so I did travel a bit and live in a couple different places. Um, and then when I came back is when I decided I wanted to do poetry full time. I would write when I was in the Navy and before the Navy, I wrote since I was a child. Um, I've, I've always been really interested in telling short stories. And I found my best outlet through poetry is where I found my healing, my community, my soul family, my forever family. Um, and the, it provided me an opportunity to use my voice to try and see how else I can heal. Um, but those stories and telling those stories is how I built connections with people, is how I, I gained the connections um, to be able to go out and be confident in the stories that I wanted to be a part of. And I think spoken word has given me kind of just that extra access because when we hear poetry, like, yes, it's the words, but as you know, Mike, like spoken word, like that's a performance. Like you're putting on an entire performance Tell Tell deeper them. than just the words. It's the the breath, the movement, the pauses, you know, the gestures, whatever you decide to put into your performance. And so I think starting off in the spoken word community um, kind of gave me access into kind of seeing if I wanted to act or not, um, if I wanted to act. And then, you know, for those of you who don't know, I did slam in 2016. I slammed on the San Diego Poetry Slam team and we took second in the nation. Um, and that kind of gave leeway to me writing a book. And then after I did that, I um, kind of just started expanding my horizons more because at these poetry events, I would meet so many different people. Um, and from meeting different people and being back in LA, I kind of started to see the industry in a different way. Because growing up, I was like, eh, Hollywood, I'm not fucking with it because <laughs> I live in LA and I know what I know what it is and I'm not with it. Um, but I think as I've gotten older and been able to expand myself, it's kind of grown on me and I'm able to see how I can release a lot of different emotions and heal myself through different characters. So I think that has been really great. And that's beautiful. And that's dope. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, you don't understand. Like y'all killed that slam. I'm telling you, it should have been first place. I don't care nobody <laughs> <saying. All> Right. <laughs> uh, Alexis, do you want to do a little background about yourself? Um, I'm Alexander King. Most people simply know me as Lex. Um, I'm originally from the DMV area. Also um, spent a lot of time in my childhood in New London, Connecticut. I am a writer, creator, um, director, producer, um, self-funded independent filmmaker. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's literally what I, all I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't even tell y'all what I did. I'm like, oh, yeah, I like writing stuff. Yeah, so I'm a vegan chef. <laughs> I'm a vegan chef and herbalist here in L.A., but I do travel. Um, I do a lot of psychonautic meals and dinner experiences as well. So infusing different plant medicines into your food as a way of healing. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. Any next question? Let me do it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so yeah, man. So we're gonna get into the seven movie real quick. Oh, which I've already, I mean, I was already a fan of the Aquarius series. And I saw like I think you did like a trailer this Alex like a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is that? What's going on there? Just... Yeah. Ooh, that trailer is very deceiving. Listen. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I, I love it. I love it. Bruh, you think it's gonna be an all sexy, good, fun time in the <laughs> <No>. dark, <laughs> in the low light, uh just love making and stuff, but boom, get hit with the truth. Um <laughs> So you want to talk about like what inspired the movie and your experience trying to put together such a big project during the pandemic? Yeah, um, I actually wrote seven, maybe like a week or two before we had got quarantined. Um, so I sat with it for the whole time. I didn't touch it during quarantine. Um, but it was, uh, I was just home alone and it was really based upon a fear. Um, for anyone who's watched seven and saw our, um, our Q&A, um, I had a cousin that passed away a few years ago and I kind of, um, I like to play around with like thoughts and pushing thoughts to help me better understand, you know, things that are just foreign for me. Um, and that, that one hit me hard. Um, you know, I still struggle with that death uh, to this day. And I just, I started thinking about, you know, being single, not being in a relationship and like, dang, you know, what if I met the love of my life, you know, and I started playing around like, well, what would be worse? Like if, you know, they passed away, unfortunately, like, I don't think I would be able to handle that. And then, you know, pushing that thought of like, well, what's worse than that? And I'm like, well, you know, what if this happened? Like, ah, well, you got to watch it for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very careful my words because some people have not seen it and I would love them to check it out. To say, experience yeah, spoil, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, experience from the beginning. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much literally how Seven became about. It just came from a fear and I'm, you know, very much pushing like introspective work and why things are the way things are, why I am the way I am and, you know. Like how was what, how what was it like trying to get it done during the pandemic? Did you do it over the past year? So we actually we shot it pretty fast. We did it pretty fast. I um <clears throat> I believe Cole it was what October. That yeah, we it was like October. Oh wow. October I decided I was gonna shoot. Um oh, and week. yeah, literally. We shot it at the end of October. I think it was like October twenty sixth. Yeah, we shot um, at the end of October because it was right before Halloween. Yep, a couple days before Halloween, and it was like literally just I called Cole like yo, you know, Cole was you know was talking about you know her. I had her audition for Sky, and yeah. um, that was going to be the original plan that I was going to play Seven, and then I had um, another person I was interested with, who's Porter, who ends up in getting casted for Sky, and I um, had uh, uh, Cole audition for Seven, and then as soon as I saw the audition, you know, or whatever happened it was like yeah you're, you're gonna get it I'm just gonna remove myself from this and it just went pretty fast it was like okay keep you available to states I need this we need that and it was hectic for the short amount of time that we were shooting um it, we went over a shooting day and but Lewis like pulled through who's our DP um he was giving me edits he was so excited about the project that he was just like giving me edits within days like hitting getting getting a trailer for us within days I was just like we just shot this like three days ago. Like, most people would be like, I hit you up next month. Let me let me mull over it real quick. No, Lewis was on and he was super passionate about it and he felt great. You know, I gave him a lot of freedom to um to shoot the way he wanted to shoot while I was directing as well. So it was very a group, very much a group project. Um and it came out beautifully. I would not have changed not one single thing about it. Did y'all one take Drake it? Like in one in one 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 shot? Sorry, what was no. that? We did not one shot it. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. There's options. I think the first day, the first day we shot from like three in the afternoon to five in the morning. And then the next day we shot from like seven in the evening to like three, four in in the morning. Five in the morning. I had that that 630 flight and Cole rushed me to the airport. Yeah, it was, it was good, she though. Was, she was crying in the movie. I don't want to get no spoilers, but it's probably real tears about the time. She was tired and stuff. She was like, man, I don't know. Yo, the final scene, I'm not going to lie. The final scene, it was like, I could just see it in Porter's face. Like, Porter was just like, this is all I have. <laughs> this is <laughs> it. <laughs> I was like, she was not even, she was beyond E. Like, there was, I was like, please, Porter, just, I know, I'm so sorry. Just one last, t- one last shot. And it kept being one last, one last. And finally, it was like, okay, cool. That's a wrap. We're good. Um, oh, it was it was love though. It was love. It was fast, but it was it was good. That's dope, man. Yeah, you can definitely see the hard work y'all put into it. It was it, it really came out great. So absolutely. Thank you. I skipped the question. You want to go back up there? Uh, you got it, man. I, 
I don't know where your finger's pointing. Right. It's a fat finger. Zip. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, so what has been your experience as a black queer storyteller in the industry? Uh, do you see that there's like significant opportunities to bring up, uh, um, to open up for similar creatives or do you think we still got a long way to go? I think we have a long way to go. I think there's always going to be opportunity. Um, however, especially with COVID hitting and uh, we, you know, us dealing with things we've all already been dealing with, I think that it's going to slow things down a little bit. Um, but there's definitely room. Like, there's definitely room. Um, the fact that we are still talking about being a, you know, a creator of color, to me, that's problematic. It shouldn't even be a thing. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'm just, I'm more so like, if you're not going to give me a shot, I'm going to give myself a shot and I'm going to keep giving myself a shot until somebody picks me up. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not really worried about how hard it is to get into the industry or why I wouldn't be able to get into the industry. Like I'm just going to create my own, my own platform at this point. Mm-hmm. Just for clarity, you, so you don't have a fan of like people, there being like a, a whole space being held for like creators of color? Do you think it should just be- No, not at all. Color? I love, I love it. And I'm, I'm absolutely glad that we have it. But the problem for me, I don't want to always be labeled as the creator of color in the industry. The industry is so whitewashed that there's a few of us that stick out, you know, and it's like, why do we have to stick out? We're in 2020, we're in 2021. Like, you know, it's, it shouldn't be that. I just, it's for me, it's just, it's universal. I just think I see things and I don't, like I see kind of like having like the best female rapper of the year and it's like was she the best rapper or the you know what I'm saying like why yeah. you gotta be a female rapper she was a rapper period like and I saw a comment with seven it was just like um someone said something regarding like seeing two women of color on you know on a show and not seeing anyone else was like it was like whoa wow and then for me I was like oh it's so normal like it was normal for me but didn't you bring that up before like how we did um, yes, I think you would like, like anytime there's a queer couple they're always either like they're mixed, they're ones one's black, one's white, or something else. I will like- say that there's not a lot of very there's not a lot of full black representation. When I have seen it, it hasn't been American. It's always been overseas. If I do mm-hmm. see two darker skinned women, I can't even say black necessarily because you know that's more so of like an American thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I've noticed that, especially like with overseas projects and things like that, there is, there's not a lot of representation, but I, I feel like there's two sides to it now that we're stepping into, you know, higher timelines. I feel like we've also been a victim of conditioning ourselves to kind of shrink in a way because we are always thinking of there not being an opportunity instead of just like like saying it's create the opportunity. There are so, so many opportunities right now that more than we've had ever before. Um, so right now I just want to see a a better push from creatives in general, a better push for yourself to kind of just be seen rather than worrying about what opportunity is not there. Absolutely. Because somebody's looking for you. Oh yeah. But they can't look for you if you're not out there, you know? I think that's the constant struggle of a creative. Once you start to step into like your passion and start to make it like a thing that you want to make money off of, it's like... I want these opportunities. I want to be on HBO. I want to be on Netflix. But like, like Will was saying, it seems like a very intentional, like you can be on this, but only in this capacity. So do you play to that? Or do you just focus on doing your own thing, which is, which is very hard. It takes a lot more time. It takes a lot more money. I'm sure Lex can attribute to that. Like, it does, constant- but I feel like that's why you have to be very steadfast and like, what are you doing this for? Are you doing it to tell stories? Are you doing it to heal people? Or are you doing it for the money? You know what I'm saying? Because money's going to come as long as you stay. But if you don't stay, then the money's going to leave as quick as you left. Um, go ahead, Lex. Um, no, I was going to say, like, I'm just for me, I'm like, I'm worried about myself and I'm going to be my first investment. That's just the way it is. Like, and the, that's the whole reason why seven, I'm not putting it, I'm going to put it on Amazon prime, but it's not on Amazon prime right now. It's not on YouTube. It's literally on my website. It's on me. It's on seven, the short.com. That's it. And for me, it's like, yeah, I would love it to be on Netflix. I would love it to be on Hulu, but I'm just, I'm not there right now. So I'm not going to dwell on, you know, how hard it is to get it there. It's like, I'll just create my own shit. I'm, I've been doing it. I will spend my last penny creating my own stuff because for me, the reward is bigger than me hoping that Netflix will pick me up, hoping that Hulu will give me a chance. Granted, I would love it for it to happen, but right now 
I get thrills from people from all over the world. I have people from South Africa, Ghana, like hitting me up and like, yo, your work is giving me like, is giving me inspiration. Like we don't have this freedom here and I get to live freely through your work. That's more important mm -hmm. to me. Long as my bills are paid, I'm fed, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think I just yeah. like lost off. Right, you good. You good. Um, that's what was so dope. Uh, that's why I wish that premiere was in person. Like, I can't wait for this damn zombie apocalypse to be over with. Cause like if all the yeah. that premiere was in person, like you probably would just die. Cause like, it was just so much love up in there. It was the thing. I was like controlling everything. Um, so I couldn't read all of the comments. I actually have a script that I'm, um, they printed it out for me. So I'm going to read it later, but they were just flying through. And I was like, yeah. dang, like, I wish I can, you know, take a second to be active, but I was, you know, making sure everything worked out. Um, it was all love. And, you know, Jojo from twenties, uh, pulled up on us and gave us, you know, talk to people. And that was love for me. Like, I, like I told, um, said before, like I met Joe at her premiere for twenties. And she came up, you know, she came up to me and was like, yo, I love your work. You know, keep doing what you're doing. I'm just like, you know me, like, you know my stuff, like, you know? So for me, it was just, it just, it's been love. It's been all love. I haven't had any things that's been problematic. Um, I'm just doing my own thing and I'm doing it when I want, how I want to do it. I don't have to answer to anybody. I could wake up at freaking eight in the morning or 12 and, you know, still be about my, my, my work, which is, I love it. Yeah, producer over like, no, and for me, he's like, I'm all about the independent shit. I'm like, yeah. and for me, like, I enjoy when my friends are doing things on their own independent because, like, how Lex has Aquarius TV and New Art Productions, it makes it easier for people like me, like a queer artist. Like, I'm thinking of rolling out, like, a cooking show, and now I have a platform that is specifically for queer people like myself to be able to put things like that out. So I think it's very important when people stay steadfast and just creating spaces for them, you know, and us growing together because all of our networks will begin to attach to each other the more we continue to grow. Exactly. And if you guys don't know, uh, Cole's actually a producer on um, on Seven as well. Yes, yes I we am. Yeah. I, I am. am. That's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that, I did do that. That's one of our mantras though, like another artist's success is success for me as well. Like it's so easy to fall into this competition thing. It's so easy oh, no. to think you miss opportunity when somebody else gets on. It's like, no, nah, bro. If we all in this together, like with not everybody's on the same page, mm -hmm. but if we all in this together, like you getting on is definitely everybody getting on. So. Yeah. And I always say people like, I don't want to stand first class by myself. Just right. That's <laughs> not fun. Right oh, right 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 hey, like, I tell me, like, you tell me, like, I'm trying to stand first class and kiki with you, girl. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be toasting champagne on by myself. Like, we can toast this together. <laughs> I love it. Um, I guess we're not. Yeah. So speaking of representation, um, I hear a lot, a lot of debates. Um, sometimes they're very problematic, but sometimes they can be healthy. Uh, people saying that um, only queer actors should play queer characters, or only trans um, people should play trans characters. And some other people say like, actors are actors, like they should be able to play, who, play whoever they want. Uh, do you believe that um, using actual queer actors for this movie had a more profound effect on the film? For me, um... I'm not worried about every, what everyone else does. However, I'm going to cast appropriately to that character. Um, for example, me casting um, for Seven and not using two queer actresses would have been the same thing to me, would have been equivalent to me casting a white person to play a black person's role. Mm. It, that, no, I'm gonna make sure that for me creating Querious TV, Querious is giving opportunity for our community. You know, our, our stuff is definitely for the allies and stuff, but in my personal work, I'm using people in my community. And that's just, everyone I know is gay. All my friends are gay, you know? <laughs> like, I have a few straight people and they're most likely my family, not necessarily like, I have, well, I think I have like a handful of straight friends. Um, but outside of that, my whole world is gay. So for me to not cast in, you know, an LGBTQ film, it that would not have made sense. I would have been going against all my morals. Yeah. I feel that. And I think what people don't realize is like that the entertainment industry is very cutthroat. Like I've been acting and modeling and, you know, going on different calls, but it's very cutthroat and it's not a, a personal thing. It's, it's yeah. a thing of remembering that we're casting to tell a story and there's already a specific vision of what that story is and how it wants to be portrayed. And Absolutely. in order to do that, you have to have the most authenticity and people don't realize that like, yes, it's one thing to tap into different characters and things like that, like those types of emotions, but 
to me, in my own personal opinion, you can't tap into an experience that you would never have to experience. That part. You know what I'm saying? Like something you can put yourself in the shoes of, that's different. But something that you could never even put yourself in the shoes of, that's, you know, that's harder. But then also, if you aren't a queer person portraying a role, we also have to be very mindful as who you are as a person. And did you always agree with the queer lifestyle? Because that can look bad on representation and branding. If you want to play this queer role now, but a year ago, you you were talking about fuck gay people and y'all can't get married. I'm not for that. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make it fair for you to profit off of us. And I'm going to call it how it is. And this is not calling it out like for, you know what I'm saying? Because we're all people. But it also makes me feel a certain type of way that people like Tyler Perry have went their whole career making money off of cross-dressing and have yet to actually speak up in the community about trans people. I don't think it's okay. Mm. That's a good point. Your whole Mm -hmm. career is built off of that. He's been coming for Tyler for a long time, and um, you gotta leave Tyler alone. Here you go. <laughs> like, no, I, I love. Mean, it. I feel like he's created great spaces, great jobs, and great opportunities. However, we, you know, where things need to be addressed and corrected, they still need to be addressed and corrected because if he wants to be for black people, that means all black people and trans black people are at the bottom of the totem pole. So he ain't for them. He ain't for us. We gonna get Tyler on the show so we can curse him <laughs> out and and troll him. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck is going on? But no, I think that's legit though. Like, it's you gotta just think about like what is actually profiting off of at a certain point, especially when you're mm-hmm. going up as much as he has. And I don't think he's. I think he's at the point he's trying to do anything to go back from because you know he used to be homeless and all this shit. And yeah, he's trying to do whatever it takes. But that's to just go back to here. bring it back full circle. I think that you know it's easier to really tap into a role if it's something that you can really like it hits home for you. Yeah. yeah. So and the funny, the crazy thing too, sorry, the crazy thing about Seven too is like, yes, I cast it, you know, um, to queer women. But if you really like look at the storyline, it has nothing to do with gender. Zero percent to do with gender. Right. Um, Which means kind of I'd rather all of them do that way. I thought, I was asked, I wanted to ask, what did you want people to get out of this? Uh, queer people and, you know, uh, straight people. Um, for people as a whole, my biggest thing was the push for the thought and to remove the ego. Um, a lot of times we, we fuck up a lot of situations because we're embarrassed or we have our ego and we just can't like sit back for a second and be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to surrender real quick. We're going to have an adult conversation and we're going to get to it. Um, so for me, this was all about communication, all about surrender, all about love um, and not about anything else. It wasn't about, well, you did this wrong and you did this and you did that. Like, if you notice, um, seven, like she's trying to protect Sky and not tell her so much. She's protecting her, um, but not to blame her for anything. And I feel a lot of times, like we need to take that lesson. Like it's not, don't worry about it being someone else's fault. Worry about mm-hmm. how you could have done something better or have just like the accountability and like remove the ego. Um, and as for writers, um, Go write your own stuff. That was my big message for seven. Go do your own stuff. <laughs> That's what Tyler Perry said. He, he writes all his own shit. Go do it. All them mediocre scripts, he be writing by himself. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know. He's getting writers, though. He just announced he's getting a writer. So, you know, I'm oh, over here, God. like, you know, emailing, like, how do I get Tyler Perry's email? <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Um, so, also with your work and your storytelling, do you ever try to get. I guess straight people to empathize with queer people to try and I guess understand that, that these things happen to them too. Or is that um, like, it's a like think about straight people. Who does that? No, I'm <laughs> what? Huh? How? Why? <laughs> the straights. Um. No. No. So my films are meant for. Um, they're definitely meant for the community, but they're 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 not about gender. It's not about what who likes what and how they like it. It's not about that. It's about internal work. And um, a lot of straight people watch Aquarius, a lot of them. I get, I had one email from a grandmother who has queer grandchildren and this was her way to connect with them. And I was, for me to, to read that message from her was like, wow, like it's bigger than how we're so boxed in. Like it's mm-hmm. so much bigger than that. Um, and it's really the message and uh, you know, 
you can learn a lot of things like you know someone someone recently told me or a few months ago told me um them watching queries like everything used to be so like the gay world was so like foreign like oh my god what do you guys do do you do this do you do that and she was like and i watched the show and i was like damn like i'll talk about this shit <laughs> so um but it's not that i'm being a spokesperson to try to convince anybody of anything like i'm creating work for people that it resonates with and i think the biggest thing with query is that me and lex have talked about is just sharing real stories because mm-hmm. i feel like we're so as les as lesbians specifically because i you know that's what i can speak to i will say the the, the male experience is completely different it is um but as, as a lesbian like I feel like we're so over sexualized that people forget that we just we have real lives and real jobs and we mm-hmm. do regular things and we got regular friends and regular bills that come every month. <laughs> like every um, month. so I think that that was a big thing that even enticed me into wanting to continue to be a part of Quarius and continue to grow with Quarius is so people can see that we're regular regular people with regular lives like there's nothing very taboo about us like there's nothing different about the way that we love the way that we show up in relationships the only thing is that this these are the genders the bodies that we were put in absolutely i think that's beautiful and we're not even going to touch on like how and this is oftentimes with men like a lot of men don't know how to deal with homosexuality or queerness Except when it comes to lesbians, and we just sexualize it and be like, oh, oh lesbians gonna be there. Okay, it's popping now. <laughs> yeah, facts, <laughs> facts. Like, that's the whole thing. Um, I was, to me, I don't I don't understand some of it because I'm like, we don't even want y'all half the time. But see, I'm gonna tell you what it is like. We're gonna, we can test it. It's definitely not about that. <laughs> it's not about that at all. It's I'm saying that, for the, I'm saying for the men. Yeah, that's what I'm speaking to. Oh, like, okay, cool. We think we in our man male brains, it's like, oh, two women making out in front of me. Oh, this is made to just like turn me on, even this if I'm on like TV. Yeah, like, even if I don't get no, it. No, no, it, it, it turned me on too. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I'm talking about dudes, like they were literally like, it's oh, it's gay niggas there, like the gay dudes there. Like, I'm like, they don't, they don't want oh, you. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 I, will, I, I thought yeah. you were talking about women. Okay, I see what you're saying. Well, they don't want y'all either, but yeah, that's bro. I, I don't know how, but somehow, in non-progressive niggas mind it's like <laughs> oh they gay so they see my butt right right <laughs> <laughs> they want my butt too like they just automatically i don't it makes no sense it's the same way people yeah. think automatically attribute like any sexual activities with the male butt is automatically gay like mm-hmm. it don't make sense yeah, yeah. So, I yeah. Don't know. i'm don't all know. like just re- respect everybody's body basically right <laughs> I don't know. Do it just gets so frustrating, you guys. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's so frustrating in 2020 that we even have these conversations because I feel like, why do I care who you are fucking? Why? Why you do you care who I am? I mean, as long as I ain't, you know, as long as I ain't yeah. fucking. It just, it just gets so frustrating at a point. And then it also does get frustrating within the community because I feel like there's so much division because there's now there's just, there's so many labels and so many titles and so many things to understand. And so many people want to be included and I want everyone to feel included, but I also want everyone to start to remember oneness that the more we divide ourselves, the more we're going to be separated. And I think that the end of the day, the goal should not be to have all these fucking acronyms lgbtqia xyz but it should be to just start looking at each other as human beings and having the fluidity to be whoever the fuck you want to be i mean absolutely i think the biggest thing is most humans natural action the things that they don't understand is to attack it or be scared of it um rather than understand to label it, it box label it up it, yeah. put it in the corner right and that's yeah. what, just a lot of niggas that don't have a lot to do but like sit around and figure out what other people are doing with their lives like we're gonna talk about personal identity later but there's a lot of people that don't really know who they are so like how dare you step into who you are and that be something yeah. that i'm not familiar with like that's, that's that projection i'm telling you that introspective work take you a long way listen it's hard it take you but... a long way that's why i just I don't be caring what other people do to be honest i just be like well i'm gonna do this um right. just show up for right. when i when i put my stuff out exactly exactly so with the um reception of Aquarius and uh, now seven. Where do you see y'all's careers? I guess going from here oh, to the fucking top. I'm a superstar. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so famous. You guys didn't even know Yo. what I'm. I'm I love so you. Famous. People are literally like my emails just been ding 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 ding. My bank account. Get back on that newsletter. I used to get your newsletter and then you just stop. 
He just left us cold turkey. <sighs> hey, know. look, she needed that. She needed that. Oh, he just called me out too. Like, <laughs> that was great. I like what other people. I like what other people do to calling out than me. Because sometimes I'd be saying stuff and cold just be like, I know, yeah, but that's so exciting. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I'm just saying I yeah. missing that's all. Yeah, no, you're not the only one to say it. A lot of people, a lot of people did find some motivation, inspiration, some good funny things in my email. So, you know, but as we expand, I think that, you know, even in film and relating it all to tie back in, it's so hard to do things when you don't have a team. Yeah. You know? So like I think I'm in the phase right now of building a team. And last year I was under a lot of overwhelm because I was trying to do so many things and did not have enough arms and legs to do it. Right. Um, and so it was hard to keep up and I'm starting to realize like you can get yourself to a certain point but a lot that we don't want to talk about like we talk about individual self-work all this stuff but you do need a community like that self-work is so that you can attract the right community so I'm, I'm grateful that I did that self-work and now I'm attracting the right community so that way we can team build together and expand and have these types of networks and connections so that way I can continue to do things like send newsletters <laughs> Way to bring back, out, but thank you for the. Because I don't want to pay no, I don't want to pay nobody to do something that's supposed to be personal. You know, because you sign up for my newsletter, y'all want to hear emails from me. Y'all don't want me to pay somebody no. to paraphrase what I'm gonna say. We don't want the same bots buying up all the PS files and the Xboxes oh, to God. send us newsletters. You feel me? You know, we want right. You. Absolutely. Uh, Lexi, did you want to speak to that? Well, you see your career taking off after after such um amazing. I feel that my work is very um. I think my work is phenomenal. I think there's so much more room for me to grow. Okay. Um, but having, you know, no experience but my own in this industry and, you know, being self-taught, um, for me, I know that someone is going to see that and understand that um, I'm worth giving a shot and that I'm going to be very versatile and um, I'm coming for people's throats. That's just that's just where I'm at. I'm, I've been an athlete all my life and... <laughs> That's I'm, I'm I'm going to the top one way or another. Whether I'm going to continue to be an independent filmmaker on my own, um, or I will be with a network. Well, you know, we'll see where it goes. But it's definitely only up from here. Like, and I'm just if you look at Aquarius um, and Seven, it's two total different things. It's two Complete total different. Things. And that and that was it. That was a year. That was a year of my work, and also not really a year because I took all that time off um, during quarantine. Um, I would, I didn't write anything from maybe, oh no, I did work on someone else's, I'm not going to go into that, but I worked on another project. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to the top. So it's either who's going to ride with me, who's not. And if not, I'll be up there, you know, on my own, on my own coin. That's just where I'm at. Precisely. I love it, man. I love it. All right, man. I guess we're in the relationship section. This is juicy part. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, this is the juicy. fun part. You want to start off? Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I was talking to talk about how the movie touches a lot on personal identity. And um one's kind of sub, I guess this is maybe something I don't know if you did it on purpose or I just got this from it. Um I feel like a lot of times our generation has this is a lot of personal identity when in a long term relationship or even when just trying to pursue somebody we really, really want to be with us. Mm-hmm. Like you just you lose yourself completely, you end up doing stuff you would never do, <laughs> saying stuff you would never say just to keep this person like do y'all see that often or i'm just am i just personally yeah right now? yeah absolutely i feel like people come with motives and you know my thing is everyone who reaches out to me because they're interested or whatever the case may be it's like i already know why you're here <laughs> what, what are you here what are you here like they just it's one it's like you think you see what you want this ain't what you want it's the dreadlocks <laughs> it's the locks. It, the, the thing is is i love them too <laughs> All right. I love them too, but I know why I have them. I know why I'm here. And a lot of times I feel like people just see certain things in their eye catches something. Then all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, I'm supposed to be with you. No, you're not. Um, and, and sometimes we lose friendships like that. We lose friendships like that. Um, we don't understand how to navigate something that's like something that makes you feel good and be like, wow, I can have an intimate friendship or be like, Ooh, I need to be intimate with you and have a relationship. Like we don't, we don't, we don't do that. Um, it's unfortunate. Yeah. But I do think in long-term relationships, I see it a lot. Um, it's happened to me, like losing yourself in a relationship. I think that our um, ideas of love have not, like, I don't feel like we have a common definition of love, of partnerships, of relationships. I feel like we all 
have very um, individual kind of definitions to these things, these grandiose things that we need other people to like kind of fulfill. Um, so I think that lack of knowingness between each other is what's created this kind of like loss because we feel like we get into relationships and you're supposed to be one. You're supposed to be one person. And in that, like, I feel like people are too busy just trying to be around the person that they don't experience the person. Um, they don't experience them for who they are. They experience like this kind of jointness of these two identities. And then when you pull them apart, they're nothing. Mm. Mm. I like that sentence a lot. Um, so I, I, one of y'all said something about intimate friendships and I saw y'all posting about it today. Um, what is what is the value of an int intimate friendship? Like, I guess y'all have. Ah, well, I think the value of a, of a intimate friendship is really priceless, you know, because I think we only think of relationships in a sense of romance when there is so much love around us all the time and so much platonically, but I feel like we have not allowed ourselves to explore this because we have this thing in our head that love is supposed to come from one person or intimacy is supposed to come from one person when love and intimacy is always around you and you should allow it in your life in every aspect that you can and I feel like your friendships is the perfect place to start to build upon what you can offer in a partnership via what you can offer in your friendships like me and Lex's relationship is very intimate it's very romantic and it's a friendship you know what i'm saying like we've never crossed the line with one another but we're always there in a capacity to where people would think that we're in a relationship or we should be in a Absolutely. relationship but it's because we treat each other with that type of respect like we're partners we decided we wanted as friends we wanted to do life together still which means you should treat that as a friend partnership you know what i'm saying like if she's down i'm gonna help her if she wants lunch i can send her lunch. there's nothing wrong with taking your friends on dates and doing things that are sweet for them and building your friendship, whether it's male and male, male and female, 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 but different type of way you want to express yourself, whatever it <laughs> yeah. is. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we need to have space for that. And those are why our relationships fell, because we're looking for people in our romantic relationships to be everything for us. And then when we have no friends that are extensions of us that should be allowed to, to give us these things, but that also calls for the opposition and the partners being secure enough in themselves to allow their other partner to have intimate relationships and intimate friendships um, outside of them. So. Yeah, I loved all that just now. I agree <laughs> a thousand percent. That's my biggest issue with how we look at modern monogamy. Like we look at this person and say, okay, now you in charge of being my end all be all, whether we married or not. So when I'm sad, happy, angry, whatever, like you got to be ready to take that for me. You deal with it. <laughs> you know it's, it's, all, it's all projection. It's all projection because we can't handle ourselves. We don't know how to navigate. And now we're projecting on our partners and that stuff. Like I used to do that shit all the time. <laughs> oh, I the think time. we all did. I can admit that. And now I'm like, I'm so aware of my shit that, you know, I'm a total different person. But I used to really be like, damn, like. I'm sad. You won't have to come over here. Hold me real quick. Be sad with me. You know, I'm upset with this Be person. With you me. need to come over here. Be upset with them with me. Um, and instead, now I'm just at a space of like, you know, okay, let me step back. Let me figure out what, you know, what do these feelings mean? I will let myself, I will allow myself to feel anything. And I'm going to deep, dig deep into that feeling so I understand why I feel that way. Um, but that's why I appreciate my, my friendship with Cole um, on a level. If I can say something to Cole, and it not be taken in a route that it's not supposed to be taken. I tell Cole I love her every day. I send her, you know, good morning. I hope you had a, a great sleep, you know, to make day your bitch, like whatever the case is gonna be. <laughs> um, and it's some some things that people don't even do in their relationships. Man, so man. it's like, some people will confuse and be like, wow, like, why don't you just date Cole? Because I love Cole as a friend. I don't want her ever not to be my friend in the whole, not the whole wide world. Like. We're, we, what we have is a great partnership and it's a long-term partnership and we're both investing. Like we've checked each other so many times. Like there's been times where I was just like, you want to talk about it now? No, I don't. All right. Bye. Like it's like, it's that, but if we don't take it to heart, we're not mad. We're not upset. Like, and if, 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 it, if it's there, then guess what we're going to talk about next business. Fuck it. We ain't, we ain't fucking up the money. So let's talk about the business. So we'll get us back to that, you know? I'm circle back. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I appreciate that. It's definitely one of the most important, you know, relationships in my life and, 
I've never had a intimate friend before. I've never had a friend that I'm actually able to be 100% myself without hurting someone's, I think I'm going to hurt someone's feelings. So that's been great. I'm like, damn, I can, you know, breathe. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's beautiful. And you already, you touched on what Cole just touched on, which is like when people see y'all and see this intimate, you know, relationship y'all have, they automatically think it has to be romantic. Right. right. Mm-hmm. It just people speaks to how distorted. Him. Yeah, it's just how distorted we just view intimacy the word intimacy. Does, yeah intimacy intimacy does not mean sexually like that's, what, that's the problem is people don't know how to time, like intimacy you can have intimacy with sexual like with sex that's cool you can have it i prefer to have it that way however in friendships and family even with family like your relationships we're afraid to be intimate like i grew up in a household where i barely remember like my aunt asked me two years ago do you think we love you? And I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? Like, yeah, you guys love me. Like you raised me out of house food. I, I didn't need for much. Like I didn't grow up wealthy, but you know, I, I had the basics. She's like, but do, do you think we love you? Did we tell you? And I'm like, hmm, you know what? I don't recall you telling me, but I know you love me. It's okay. She's like, no, that's, that's not okay. It's not okay to go a whole childhood without remembering that someone told you they loved you. Like, and that's the part, like those things. Like now when I talk to my family, I, I kind of make them say it. I'm like, all right, love you, bye. I will call you back. And Love stay, you. Stay Bye. <laughs> yeah, I don't play with right. that. I'm like, just tell people how you feel. Like, you're here on this earth. This statement is, you know, give or take. You're here on this earth in this body. Um, one time. One time only. So make the best out of it. Tell people you love them. And don't, you know, if you have a friend where you're telling them, like, hey, I love you. And they're uh, probably going to the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. No, exactly, yo. So in terms of, like relationships that are romantic do y'all think like a lot of us even know how to tell people how to properly love us like i don't know if y'all believe in like love languages and stuff like that i do oh absolutely um, i do absolutely yeah like you lex I'm, I'm, it sounds like your love language is uh words of affirmation like mine's is you know what i'm greedy i want them all <laughs> she likes all of them she likes all of i them like all everything i'm not even joking i like them all too all of them yeah the words affirmation just barely edges out the rest but like Stuff like that. Like, do we even know how to teach people how to love us properly? Or do most of us just kind of like get in a relationship and just kind of expect, you know, you look, you look at social media and be like, relationship goals or whatever. And you just kind of right. expect to I just get those things. The majority things. of people are looking one aesthetically or mm-hmm. two people have an idea of what they want, but they have this idea before they meet the person. So it's the idea without the taking account for another person's feelings and their thoughts and what they think um and so when you put those two together sometimes it just doesn't work but I think a lot of people have not yet really given themselves everything that they are asking for from other people and so they realize that when they're trying to teach someone how to love them it isn't translating or they're they're still not being treated right because they haven't given themselves the things fully you know what I'm saying like someone told me a story once and it's like if you meet someone at mcdonald's when you're buying a happy meal right they're gonna assume you like mcdonald's happy meals so y'all start dating why you think this nigga gonna take you to ruth chris when he could take you to mcdonald's and get you a happy meal because you like happy meals you know what i'm saying like people treat you how you treat yourself yourself. yeah how you love yourself is how you show others how to love you um Mm -hmm. i'm a firm believer of that and i think that's why you know a lot of my work is always about that introspection, like always about going deeper and understanding those things. Um, no one's gonna love you better than you. Mm-hmm. And if you allow someone to love you better than you, you, you really don't know who you are. And you mm-hmm. actually shouldn't be in that relationship, period. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tricky. Cause like, I mean, I feel like we're not saying nobody's, des- I don't I just wanna clarify. We're not saying no one is deserving of love even when you don't love yourself necessarily. But I think that yeah, you definitely get to a, have to get to a point where like you know who you are and love who you are and you can want to better yourself but like if you yeah. don't go through that journey yourself like you cannot put that journey on somebody else that's not fair Absolutely. for that person. you can't because one of two things could happen one you could be settling in a relationship you're not supposed to be with not supposed to be in but also two you could be deteriorating your self-worth and your self-confidence by being with someone who's not capable of giving you what you actually need because you didn't know what you actually needed. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that discernment is not to say that you're not lovable or no one should love you in this moment, but it's to say that once you become very clear in what it is you want, it's easier to not get hurt so much and so bad. 
Do you know what I'm saying? So quick because you've actually like edged out what it is you want to have in your life versus what it is you don't. And a lot of people are just going into relationships just saying, I just want love. And a relationship is so much more than just love. Yeah. You know what I'm I feel like people are just like risking it all on some not even love that like you. It is. I like it you. Really you like me. Like we got to be together. Sex. Or like yeah. we look cute together type. Yeah. Thing. I think people are also sometimes they're just trying to escape like their own depression and their own loneliness. And they're trying mm-hmm. to keep up with the relationship goals and things they see on Instagram. Yeah. And it's it just causes a whole lot of destruction because you haven't really fixed yourself inside or you haven't really figured out what you really like. You right. just don't like being alone or just being alone with yourself. Right. Yeah. But let's also touch on that because I don't want people to feel like you can't work on yourself and actively be in a relationship because right. you can. However, you also have to be, I feel like in order to do that, you have to be with a partner, with a person who is very understanding, who is already at an evolved place to not take that personally, that you need personal space. So it's not that it can't work and you can't work on yourself while still being with someone, it's that you have to be able to be with someone who is willing to handle that as well. And that's more so where the problem comes in is the partners aren't willing to handle that because they need more than you can offer at the moment. But at the same time, I think people aren't very uh, forthcoming with where they're at in their life Mm -hmm. because they want to make themselves, I guess, more appealing than they actually are. Oh, absolutely. That's that lack of clarity and who the fuck you are. So it's like knowing (laughs) who you are, what you got to bring to the table. Do you got a table, sis? (laughs) Yeah, sis, exactly. Man, I I know that very, like, just too well. And we're not talking about the little fucking pop-up beer pong table, bitch, okay? (laughs) I'm out. Okay. You 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 wear a company throat. (laughs) <laughs> we don't we're not doing the beer pong table no more okay period i need an amethyst table with um gold legs thanks <laughs> gold legs, please. Gold legs. i'm out Ooh. please <laughs> no, no absolutely <laughs> clarity then clarity 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 being forthcoming clarity. being honest like it's so wild how <laughs> the concept of being honest like at all times is like a foreign thing that's yeah. hard to be honest when you've been lying to yourself for the last but you're right. 15 years of your life <laughs> I was gonna say a lot of times I feel like people get into these spaces and they start creating bad habits and once you create that habit it's so hard to get out of it like I had a friend who used to call me all the time like damn I just lied to her and I'm like well why'd you lie she's like, I don't know I just I keep doing it I'm like <laughs> bro it was like and it's every time they broke up but she always says she's like I don't know why I would lie like I have no I had no reason to lie I would just it would just come out and I'm like bro why would you it's like I read them Steve but Harvey books and <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. I think we're on the last question, man. And as, as I know, uh, Lex has to go soon. Um, you want to pitch it? Oh, you got it. Um, so the film really reminded us like how deeply rooted traumas, um, much like um, lies, <laughs> play a role in way too many relationships these days from the start. Um, how do we kind of get... I see it changing. I see it, like more people being aware and more people promoting therapy, but still... I still see trauma just rising up out of people that they didn't even know was there in the first place before getting in a relationship. Like, how do we kind of get people to just work on themselves and just be patient with themselves and not have this style uh, like, well, this person's right here in front of me and they like me right now or sex is available to me right now, so I got to pursue it. How do we get people to just kind of sit still and just resolve that inner trauma, especially childhood drama, trauma, trauma, excuse me, um, before even getting in a relationship? Um... For me, it's all communication. Like my thing is, I don't, I don't want to go into a relationship with a perfect person. Mm. I want to go into a relationship with the person. Like, I'm gonna put it this way: you have your traumas, and I'm a, I'm responsible enough to know that if I'm gonna get into a relationship, that I'm gonna have to help you carry that. Sometimes, my problem wouldn't be the trauma; it would be how you're reacting to your trauma. That's what I'm looking mm-hmm. for. Are you shutting down? Are you getting angry? Are you breaking things? Are you trying to sweep it back under the carpet? Are you doing all those things? If you're doing those things, I'm not meant for you. You come into me, it's like, I'm coming to you, I'm not perfect. I have some things that I have to work on and I hope that you can assist me in those things and I'm gonna assist you as well. But my, like I said, my biggest thing is that reaction. Like, how are you reacting? What are you doing? Are you working hard to, get, to be better? Like, everyone's gonna have trauma no matter what. 
but yeah, like for me, it's just, it's that if you're not willing to meet a partner that has trauma and, you know, helping them assist them in that trauma, do not get in the relationship. It's not your responsibility. Don't get me wrong. It's not your responsibility. However, you're responsible to that relationship. Um, and if they're mm -hmm. acting irate, you are being irresponsible by staying in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, damn, I be smoking a lot of weed. I'm like trying to go, what the hell was Listen, the question? Listen, Lexi dropped all the jewels, yeah. so it's like, you can't even follow it up, yeah, really. what's the question? <laughs> uh, the question was basically, um, how do we get oh, people to trauma, just recognize trauma, trauma, yeah. relationship. Oh, the trauma. Yeah. <laughs> no, yes, I think, oh, because my answer was, um, I think that people, especially in our generation, we need to allow ourselves more space and more grace to explore, mm -hmm. to really get curious about people, about ourselves, about who we are in different scenarios, who we are with different people. I think that we're so eager to just not be alone that we've never actually dated in our generation. It's kind of like, okay, I'm talking to this person. Now let's try and be together. Then we break up. Then I'm talking to someone different. Rather than really vetting people, even if you take out the sex part of it, if that's more comfortable for you, but like really vetting people and and not in a way to like vet them to even have it to go anywhere, but vet them to see yourself. Who am I in different scenarios with different characters, with different type of people? What does that bring up out of me? So that way you can start to know, like, am I an insecure person? Like, do I have insecurity? Like if I met with a, a you know, a six or a seven, I'm not as insecure. But if it's a 10, then I become insecure. Like those are things in yourself. Like you got to you know, evaluate, but you can only do that when you're placed in those scenarios. So I think remaining very curious and remaining very open to more than one situation um, can allow you to explore yourself. And Absolutely. that doesn't even just have to be in dating, like, like to get to dating, like there's so many other aspects of your life that you can use as tools. So just your friendships, kind of like we were talking about earlier, like being around your friends is the best way to figure out what your triggers are, what your traumas are because your friend you can allow your friends to be as open as, and as candid as they want to be without having an obligation of the relationship and that can actually really help grow you what you're saying is you should date 20 people at one time and <laughs> commit to nothing commit to absolutely nothing that's what you, that, damn that's what you got from that that's that's what you got. That's what you got from that. This is just though, right? I'm just, stay I'm just serious like... and stay dangerous. My <laughs> the thing is, is I look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback off Cole. You could be single for as long as you want to be single. You could say, I'm ready for a relationship, but you've been single. You do not know what you are like in a relationship with a whole right. new person. It did no. That's a whole new pop. That's a whole new formula that you just created. There's no way that you're the same person. If you are the same person, you got you got you got to figure some things out. Your relationship gonna have some issues. <laughs> relationship and you is gonna have some issues. Yeah. The reason I love what y'all are saying so much right now is because I feel like we do feel ourselves to be this one size fits all thing, and you know you promote that, promote that whole like take me as I am thing, and mm -hmm. if you can't handle me, then just keep it moving, and so you That's just try to take the same <laughs> template to every interaction, including mm -hmm. sex. That's my biggest mm -hmm. issue. A lot of people try to have sex with everybody the same way. The same way, girl. Don't be fucking me like everybody don't come the same way. That's that's the thing. Everybody don't come the same way. You trying to do the same trick every time? You doing the bunny rabbit like energizer button pumps? I mean, if it worked once, like now if it worked, that's the problem. That's the problem is we don't even 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 then. I feel like we don't even explore sexually. Everything becomes down to like what you won't do or what you. It's like for real, like you don't know how you're gonna react to some a whole new person or someone else. Like you don't. We limit ourselves so much in life that we don't often talk about how we limit ourselves in sex. We just, we don't do God. it. It's about to turn into a whole nother podcast. Like, <laughs> Listen, I mean, I, yeah. We're going to get y'all back on. That's what I'm, I'm telling you. People be missing out on a truly, again, intimate, which doesn't have to have sex, but, you know, can, truly intimate, vulnerable sex life will change mm -hmm. your entire view on the world. Absolutely. Like, people be so caught up in just getting a nut or just getting somebody in the bed, period. Period, like this is the chase. Like, I gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> okay, now what you about to do when you get me? 
You want to be kept? I, don't, I didn't know that. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like a whole, I think there's a whole bis- misconception around sex and oh, people just, you know, it's unfortunate. We're going to get you back on the podcast. Right. We got more to say about that. I can tell. Oh, oh, but yeah. for now, I want to say thank y'all a thousand times mm-hmm. over. Like, we cannot tell you how much we appreciate y'all taking your time. If you have any final words, anything you want to shout out, we can put y'all Instagram pages on the in the um, live so people can find y'all. Um, I'm just gonna let y'all have the mic. But yeah, um, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity. I always think it's really good. I was um, briefly telling my roommate this morning, and we we're just talking about slowing down long enough to really think of your accomplishments, you know, because I feel like as a young person, I've still done so much and I'm in, in a completely different space in my life right now, especially acting with seven and being a traveling chef and herbalist. Um, seeing you hit me up based off of another accomplishment that I had earlier in my life, let me know that just because I'm at the beginning and budding stage of something else takes nothing away from all the things that I have already done and I have already accomplished. So I just want to give you my deepest gratitude and thank you for reminding me, you know, of, of the things that I've done and, and what I've put out into the world and how steadfast I've been in, in my rootedness and healing, no matter what modality I've done it through. So thank you. And yes, you can follow me on Instagram at I am Cole Lawson, E-Y-E-A-M-C-O-L-E-L-A-W-S-O-N. Or you can check out my website. It's I am Cole Lawson, spelled the same way, dot com. Dang, I feel like I should have went first because I was the right. <laughs> You know, fucked up. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, yeah, um, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I I want to get my work out there to just see that, you know, you guys are strangers. You guys are strangers and you guys saw something in my work to um, make you guys reach out. So that for me, that's big. Um, you guys being men as well, because I'm very much used to women always contacting me and wanting to work with me. And um, so it, it, feel, it feels good that I don't feel so boxed in um, being a creator. And it's been, you know, this conversation is great. Could definitely go on for hours. Had yes. Definitely having a good time. <laughs> um, if you guys haven't uh, checked out uh, Seven, it is available at seventheshort.com. Um, my Instagram is I am Alexander King. Um, uh, you can check us out at queerstv.com. Um, go ahead, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. All those things count. You know, I'm an independent filmmaker. So when you guys are streaming and sharing, um, it does help me out. And I want to be able to continue to, you know, bring you guys some um, some great fucking con- great, uh, content. No, just put the fucking yeah. back in there. You can put, put the fucking back in there. <laughs> First of all, I have to remember, like, which interview am I in right now? Which one? <laughs> I was. I just had an interview for um this network, Island Network, and I was literally in there like, don't swear, don't swear, and I went out to go. I literally did the same. Thing. <laughs> no, this is yeah. Come is... fucking support an independent artist. All right. There you go. That's Period. What I'm That's Period. What I'm talking about. Uh, I just want to continue to encourage y'all and remind y'all the world is watching. As you can see, the world is watching. The world is celebrating y'all. Keep doing your thing. You got any final words? I just want to say uh, it was an amazing short film. I was not disappointed at all. Uh, it was just it was just quality. So I'm really happy that I saw it. Yes. Um, thank you. Oh, let me ask y'all before we get out of here. Mm-hmm. Who, who, what team y'all on? Team Sky or Team, uh, team um, Seven? Oh, I'm, I'm definitely not on Team Seven. Ooh, <laughs> I am definitely not. Did you see somebody? Oh, somebody shout out my question. I said, "Is seven a fuck boy?" That was me. <laughs> yes. Okay. First of all, seven is not a fuck boy. Seven is sweet, and seven's been hurt. Seven is Lawrence. Seven was healing. Okay. Okay. Seven was. Seven, not, is, I, seven not, is still healing. Yeah, seven listen, is still healing. Um, seven ain't learned nothing. But I feel like people don't feel like, like okay, like seven had to deal with a lot too though like on her end like yeah. there were so many loose ends that weren't able to be tied for her versus on skies and she was able to do, start you know have a new start and Listen. seven wasn't able to yeah i'm I like feel... really trying to watch my words but no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> make a case Something like a case i feel all that i understand all that it was the breakfast for me <laughs> <laughs> Why the breakfast? Why the breakfast? She made the breakfast. And then, and then Sky was like, oh, that's my favorite. How did you know? She's just like, I, I, I just guess. I, 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 I just guess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, just, it's my favorite. It's mine too. too. This is a specific ass breakfast is the old favorite too. All right. That was a fuckboy move. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but, okay, so I'm going to throw it to you different. 
Oh no, I can't even throw it to you because it's gonna give it away. Damn, we gonna we gonna talk. Separately. Look, okay, all right, no, this is <laughs> in the podcast. If y'all don't, if y'all watch the movie, cut this part off and then come back. Go ahead. Okay, if you think about it, right? Seven could very well be seeing and helping Sky get these triggers for that memory to come. Yeah. True. Is, was that her it's intention? Yeah, her intention don't seem like I'm trying to break you out of this. Uh, I think the way know, if you re re <laughs> yeah re, re re watch it and you'll see her her mannerisms. Like you'll see how the second time you watch, you'll see how how Seven reacts to everything. It's like she's very much shed, like you know walking on eggshells. However, mm -hmm. um, she wants the best for Sky, and she you know it's it's good. It's it, it, I do feel like she wants the best for Sky. I don't feel like it's complete. Like I just was trying to get the buns on some, you know. I'm about to yeah, say, if Seven really wanted right. to help like that, like why did Seven, seven start with the butt? That, you heard that question? What happened? I said if Seven really wanted to help, why did Seven like start with the butt instead of like a date? You know, because that pussy was good. First of all, <laughs> how many times you've been out drunk and this shit just happened? <laughs> You want to like stop? You want to stop? Hold on. No, that don't just happen. You, you were nah. with somebody for so long, and now you got the opportunity, like, yo. And you already know what it feel like. And you already know what it is. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. See, I understand. Because I, I, okay. that was a fuckboy tendency. I'm not going to lie. That that's all I'm saying. Boy. Yeah, I'm not saying she's a fuckboy. I asked the question out there. But it was that was fuck boy ish. Thank you. I, I specifically wanted to raise that though, like on um how important consent is and how important, important. Yeah. disclosing information um uh, is before yeah. you sleep with someone. Um this is how diseases get spread. This is how people get taken advantage of. Um and I actually wrote it in a more beautiful sense. Um, but it's it, that that shit's real. That shit's real. I would have been livid if I was seven. I mean sky. <laughs> I was just gonna ask um, real quick. So you feel like Seven did violate her consent? I don't know what you would call it. Um, you know how it's not its I not necessarily like rape, but like. Yeah. Feel I feel like, like she, it's consensual, but I feel like she did violate her for not letting her know that they did have a previous connection. Yeah. Right. Like she didn't let Seven make Sky make the decision for herself if that's something she wanna do. For example, if someone who was sleeping with someone had an STD and they knew that, and the person, even though it was consensual, that's fucked up. That's yeah. Fucked up. You didn't like them make but that like decision. Also in a sense of it's just like, what if, you know, like this wasn't the person that she thought she was, but she, you know, knew her. And then it's kind of like, okay, but I didn't want, like, had I known who you were before, I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. that's well, when we get, when we get to the, um, our little series that we, you know, we're funding for right now, you get all the answers. Listen, I'm ready for it. Right. I'm with it. <laughs> I do. I do want to say that earlier, but actually, I don't want to get into spoilers. Um, but I love that you touched on that because I love that we're starting to have more discussions about those gray area situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all seen the series on HBO called I May Destroy You. Yeah. Oh, I need to finish the last episode. It was phenomenal. Watch that last episode. You will lose your fucking mind. <laughs> I need to watch the last. It was phenomenal. Have you seen it, Cole? Yeah, I have. That was probably it's very my, triggering. Very yeah. triggering. Yeah. Uh, very emotional. I didn't know what to think of it at first, but as it progressed, I was like, what the fuck? You but, start to sympathize with stuff that's not like we don't, we hear these tragic stories, but we only hear them one way. Exactly. Like this shit happens where it's almost question like, yo, did did that happen to me? Like that's some real ass shit. That's, that's some real ass shit. About the ghosting part, which I didn't know that's what it's called when you just pull up a condom during sex. Oh. oh, yeah, I didn't know it was mm -hmm. called ghosting. I'm thinking ghosting of like, his my up, don't talk to him again. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, the other shit. Um, it was, oh, with the, um, her homegirl having to threesome with the dudes, and she didn't know the dudes knew each other mm -hmm. until after the fact. Stuff like that. It's yeah. stuff we need to talk about because the shit is not black and white. It's different because it's different. Like, I feel like even like that, that was very triggering for me because I was like, to me, that turns it from a threesome to kind of like a gang bang. Like, it's not uh, absolutely. It's not the same energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So thank y'all for having these conversations. Thank y'all again for joining us. Listen, y'all got to come back for real. Cause this yeah, definitely. We're definitely me. excited to come back. Absolutely. Well, thank y'all so much. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, viewers, for rocking with us as usual. I'm sorry we took such a long hiatus. Oh, Patreon. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's not going to get us together today. Um, the Patreon.com.
slash cultivated ignorance. If you want to support more shows just like this, uh, we've been putting up mad reviews. Uh, we got a couple new patrons off of it. Thank y'all for joining us. Um, we, oh man, we got to talk about Euphoria. That's what we're going to talk about next. Oh, Lord. Ruth. Listen, between seven and Euphoria is a little short. I don't know what we are Euphoria. These are like, we can overload it with this amazing, amazing entertainment. We up here with Euphoria? Yes. Listen, hey. tell, come back. Tell you, that thing was quality. You fucking cry over in this apartment alone. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Damn. Please check us out. Patreon.com says Coast Break Ignorance. Um, check out Alexandra. Check out Cole. They're amazing people. We'll see y'all next time. Thank you so much.